There is a rock that links New Zealand, Australia, New Caledonia, and Antarctica. This is the fascinating story that takes us across the oceans to find a hidden link that tells of a time when these landmasses were joined during the Permian period when a subduction event occurred, forming an extensive volcanic arc system. During the Permian period, approximately 280 to 250 million years ago, a vast oceanic volcanic arc system formed along the eastern margin of Gondwana, the ancient supercontinent that once included most of the modern southern hemisphere. This system was created by subduction, a process where one tectonic plate, usually a dense oceanic plate, is forced beneath another, typically a lighter continental plate, sinking into the Earth's mantle where it melts and generates magma. This molten rock then rises to the surface, forming a chain of volcanoes known as an island arc. Among these ancient arcs, the Brook Street Terrain of New Zealand, the Gympie Terrain of Queensland Australia, the Taremba Terrain of New Caledonia, and parts of northern Victoria Land in Antarctica share striking geological and geochemical similarities, suggesting they were once part of the same volcanic arc system before continental drift separated them. These terrains primarily consist of volcanoclastic sequences, which are rock fragments produced by volcanic eruptions, mafic and ultramafic cumulates, which are dense magnesium and iron-rich rocks that crystallized from magma deep within the crust, and intrusive rocks, which is magma that cooled and solidified below the Earth's surface. Their widespread distribution suggests that they were once part of a single continuous arc system along the edge of Gondwana, which was later broken apart by geological forces. Imagine standing at the edge of a vast, turbulent ocean during the Permian period. Before you, an unstable chain of volcanic islands rises from the depths, roaring with eruptions of fiery magma and billowing plumes of volcanic ash. The skies are often darkened by clouds of sulfur and fine ash, while the surrounding waters churn with pyroclastic flows, scorching avalanches of gas and rock that race down the flanks of the volcanoes, hissing and exploding violently as they meet the sea. Unlike the stable continental landmasses of Gondwana, this arc was separate, floating in the vast Paleo-Pacific Ocean. It was a world of fire and water, where violent subduction processes continuously fed the growing volcanic chain. Massive earthquakes rumbled beneath the waves, and molten lava poured into the sea, creating new land bit by bit. These volcanoes were the first stepping stones in a gradual assembly of what would later become parts of New Zealand, Australia, New Caledonia, and Antarctica. The Brook Street terrain, also known as the BST, is found predominantly in New Zealand's South Island, and it's a crucial geological remnant of this Permian arc. It consists of clinoperoxene ferric basalts, which are volcanic rocks with large, greenish-black crystals of pyroxene minerals, high magnesium oxide and caramite dikes, which are dark magnesium-rich rocks formed from magma intrusions, and basaltic to andesitic volcanoclastic and sedimentary rocks. Dacites and rhyolites, more silica-rich rocks, are also present but rare, suggesting that the volcanic arc was still in a primitive stage of development. Intrusive bodies, such as trondramite plutons, which are light-coloured granitic rocks formed from deep-seated magma chambers, and dolerite dikes, narrow vertical sheets of basaltic rock that cut across older formations, provide further insight into the magmatic evolution of the terrain. Field observations and petrological studies indicate that many of these rocks are the products of upper crustal magmatic differentiation, a process where molten rock slowly cools and crystallizes, forming distinct layers of mineral-rich rock at different depths. The BST is unique in its widespread occurrence of high magnesium and caramites and primitive island arc tholeites, which suggests that arc parental magmas may have been more primitive than previously thought. This indicates that deep mantle sources, rather than crustal recycling, played a key role in the terrain's magmatic evolution. Some sections, such as the Bluff Complex, appear to have formed in a back arc or arc rift environment where tectonic forces pulled the volcanic arc apart, creating basins filled with new volcanic activity. These regions provide evidence of geochemical variation within the arc system, suggesting different stages of volcanic growth and differentiation. Across the Tasman Sea, in Queensland, Australia, the Gympie terrain provides another crucial link in this geological puzzle. Like the BST, it consists of Permian volcanic and sedimentary sequences, 
including high magnesium basalts and caramites and arc-derived volcanoclastic sediments. Geochemical studies of the Gimpy terrain confirm strong similarities with the BST, particularly in its mineralogical and isotopic composition. Fossil evidence from sedimentary layers interbedded with volcanic rocks further supports the hypothesis that these terrains were once part of the same volcanic arc system, active along the eastern Gondwanan margin before it was dissected by plate movements and later accreted onto their respective landmasses. Further north in New Caledonia lies the Teremba terrain, a sequence of Permian basaltic to andesitic lavas, pyroclastic deposits, and associated marine sediments. This terrain, though smaller in exposure, is a critical link in reconstructing the paleogeographic history of the arc. The Teremba terrain exhibits geochemical signatures remarkably similar to those found in the Brook Street and Gibby terrains, including high alkaline basaltic rocks and clinoperoxene ferric andesites. Fossil bearing sedimentary sequences provide biostratigraphic constraints that help refine its age, aligning it with other Permian island arcs of eastern Gondwana. Although largely covered by ice today, northern Victoria land in Antarctica preserves remnants of Permian island arc sequences that are strikingly similar to those found in New Zealand, Australia, and New Caledonia. Geological studies have identified volcanic and intrusive rock assemblages consistent with arc-related magmatism, linking these Antarctic fragments to the same subduction system that formed the Brook Street terrain and its correlatives. Structural geological evidence further supports the idea that the Brook Street, Gympie, and Teremba terrains were once part of a single extensive island arc. Fault lines, deformation patterns, and preserved fold structures indicate that these terrains experienced similar tectonic forces after their formation. The widespread presence of ophiolite sequences, which are fragments of ancient oceanic crust and upper mantle that have been thrust onto continental plates, suggests that portions of the arc were later abducted onto the Gondwanan margin, becoming embedded in modern landmasses. Additionally, the trital zircon dating of sedimentary rocks interbedded with the volcanic sequences shows matching age distributions across these terrains, further supporting their shared origin. The presence of high temperature metamorphic assemblages in some regions also points to deep burial and exhumation processes that affected the terrains long after their initial formation. As Gondwana began to fragment during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods, powerful rifting events and the opening of the Tasman Sea and Southern Ocean pulled apart what was once a contiguous island arc system. The geological forces responsible for this fragmentation included rifting, subduction rollback, and plate divergence, which drove the landmasses in different directions. As Zealandia, a now largely submerged continent, drifted eastward, it carried pieces of the volcanic arc with it. The volcanic arc's violent history also left behind significant mineral deposits, particularly in the form of platinum group elements, chromite, and nickel-rich ultramafic cumulates. These deposits are most notable in the Green Hills complex of New Zealand, where layered mafic intrusions have yielded platinum-rich horizons. Additionally, copper, gold, and base metal sulfides are associated with hydrothermal systems that developed in the volcanic arc subaqueous environment. In New Caledonia, the terrains host significant nickel laterite deposits, a result of prolonged weathering of the ultramafic rocks derived from the Permian Island arc. The Brook Street terrain is a vital geological link that connects the ancient histories of New Zealand, Australia, New Caledonia, and Antarctica. Once part of a vast Permian volcanic arc, these terrains now exist as fragmented pieces of a lost tectonic past, separated by millions of years of continental drift and ocean spreading. By studying these terrains, geologists continue to piece together the story of Eastern Gondwana's tectonic evolution revealing the deep connections between seemingly distant landmasses. Through careful geochemical and petrological analysis, we can trace their shared origin, bringing to light the fascinating history of the ancient island arcs that helped shape the continents we see today. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.